Hi class, let's talk about recurrence relations. One of the most famous recurrence relations is the Fibonacci numbers. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc. Remember, after the second term of the Fibonacci numbers, each term is determined by the previous two terms. Definition. A sequence of real numbers, a is equal to a0, a1, a2, etc., associates a real number for each natural number, little n, in the natural numbers. Just as a note here, it usually starts at n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1. It can actually start anywhere. However, there's something additional that's special about this particular sequence it forms a recurrence relation. Definition. A recurrence relation defines a sequence of real numbers, a, inductively, by expressing each term a sub n in terms of its predecessors. a sub n is going to be f of a0, a1, all the way to a n, with initial condition a0. That's what kicks off the sequence. Here, f is going to be some function. For example, for the Fibonacci numbers, f sub n is going to be the sum of the two preceding terms, and the initial condition f sub 0 is 0, and f sub 1 is going to be 1. And so here we'll note that sometimes more initial conditions are needed to define the sequence. Let's do a different example. Example. Let a sub n be the number of regions created by n lines in general position in the plane. What this means is no two lines are parallel and no more than two lines meet at a single point. When there are no lines in the plane, there is only one region. When there is a one line in the plane, there are two regions. When there are two lines in the plane, there are four regions. When there are three lines in the plane, there are seven regions. Do you see a pattern? The third line got split up into three different sections by the two previous lines. So we added three regions. When there are four lines in the plane, there are 11 regions. The pattern goes on like so. Altogether, an is going to be an minus 1 plus n. Definition. A recurrence relation is first order if it is of the form an is equal to some function of an minus 1. That is, the nth term depends only on the n minus first term. Example. An is equal to an minus 1 plus n. This is the current recurrence relation uh, defined by the number of regions formed by n lines in the plane. And this is going to be first order. And does not depend on any terms in the sequence except the n minus first term. Example, Towers of Hanoi. So suppose we've got this set up. We've got three pegs and we've got a uh, smaller and smaller disks stacked on this peg. Here's the question. How many moves does it take to move the tower of disks to another peg, given one, you can only move one disk at a time, and two, larger disks cannot be placed on top of smaller disks? So let's see how many moves it takes. On top of our disks are n minus one disks. Before we can move the bottom disk, we have to move all the other disks. So we're going to move these guys to this peg. This is our first move. How many moves does that take? Well, if an is the number to move n disks to another peg. So this move will take an minus 1. Then we're going to move the bottom disk over here. So this is going to be our second move, second set of moves. And this takes precisely one move. And then we're going to take all of these and stack them on top. 
that again takes an minus one moves. So what we get is the recurrence relation an is going to be two an minus one plus one. And note that an is equal to two an minus one plus one is a first order recurrence relation. Definition, a recurrence relation is second order if it is of the form an is equal to some function of an minus one and an minus two. That is, the nth term depends only on the n minus first and n minus second terms. We already have an example of this. Example, the Fibonacci numbers. Fn is equal to Fn minus one plus Fn minus two. This is a second order recurrence relation. So you can probably see where we're going and how to generalize this. Question, how would you define an nth order recurrence relation? Apart from the order, we can also attach other descriptors for a recurrence relation. A recurrence relation is called linear if the function f is linear in the terms a0 through an minus 1. That is, there are no higher powers involved. So for example, an is equal to 2 an minus 1 plus 1 is a linear recurrence relation. A recurrence relation is called homogeneous if each expression that makes up f has the same power with respect to the terms of the sequence. For example, the Fibonacci numbers. A recurrence relation is called inhomogeneous if the expressions in the function f have different powers with respect to the terms of the sequence. For example, the sequence formed by the number of regions made by n lines in the plane is given by an is equal to an minus 1 plus n. Here, this is degree 1, and here we've got a degree 0 term. All right, now let's put some of these terms together. So, for example, if I have 1, 5, 13, 29, 61, etc., one might be able to look at this and start to guess a formula. So this is going to be 1, this is going to be 2 times 1 plus 3, 13 is 2 times 5 plus 3, 29 is 2 times 13 plus 3, etc, etc, etc. If the pattern continues, this will give us an is equal to 2 an minus 1 plus 3 with initial condition a0 is equal to 1. This is going to be an example of a linear, inhomogeneous, first-order recurrence relation. One of the frustrating things about recurrence relations is that in order to write down one term, you need to know at least one previous term. This means it can take several steps in order to figure out the term that you're interested in. In what we're going to do next, we're going to figure out how to find solutions to these recurrence relations, that is, how do we find a term in a recurrence relation without reference to previous terms? That's what we're going to do next class.